And they were word deletions, not spelling errors. Grammar was good, though. Thank you. <laughs> the ultimate goal is to make it easier to read. I thought it read very fluidly compared to the old one where the old one it seemed like you went here and then you went down there and then you went here and then you went back down there. It was fluid and simple reading. Eighth grade level. <laughs> More pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in the sign show. Yeah. That's good because most contractors can barely read. <laughs> <laughs> he's a contractor, so he's good. Yeah, <laughs> he's I have personal himself. experience with that. They <laughs> read the apps quite well. Yeah. Be nice back there, engineer. Come on. I suddenly realize. You know when you look at my engineering bill every month? <laughs> So when do you start on the commission or the council? It's one in December. So the exit hazing is in November. Yeah. Um, he gets to run a meeting and hopefully it's a contentious one. Remember when you first got your crows? Aren't they all? Hey, you remember when you first got your crows? You gotta go through the gauntlet? Yeah, so long ago I don't even remember. Your golden dragon days? Did you do any time on an icebreaker? What? Northland. Okay. That's one, of, is that one of the, the new bigger ones? Mm -hmm. That's one of the old ones, like the glacier? Yep, smaller than the glacier. So rough spot at them? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Did you ever make a trip through the north, the Northwest Passage? No. Um, when I was in Seattle, the Polar Sea or Polar Star, one of the two, I don't remember which one, they actually had made the first successful Coast Guard Northern Passage route or something. They went all the way across North America and came out to the Pacific side and were coming back. And it wasn't until they got actually in the Straits of Juan de Fuca, they hit a storm or whatever, and one of their sailors died on the, on the, on the bridge. He slid all the way across and hit his temple or something. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening. Warm enough for you? What's that? Warm enough for you? Of course. I'm I'm just back from Baltimore, so <laughs> I'm happy that it's just dry. Let me see if I can get in this That's an awful kind of heat those folks have. I make sure it was me. <laughs> it's it's been you, a long they week. put you closest to the teacher. <laughs> I see that. You get a long Did you make it to the make it through the primaries, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. There's two of them that got to run off in December. Who are the two? Eric Granillo and Regina Picaro. How close were they? Eight votes. Wow. Eight. Hey, Andrew, we just turned up a speaker for you. Can you speak for a second, see if we can hear you better? Absolutely. That'd be a no. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't hear me any better? No. <laughs> Maybe they never quite know when the computer is going to pick up well or not. not. This speaker at all. Yeah. Just this here. one a little bit. Yeah, we, we're not quite sure why it is that the speakers pick up one way or the other. Yeah, but it's bad. all through the computer audio. So hmm. should be okay. I will try and speak up as loud as I can. Can we go speakerphone through the Zoom? I think he's through the Zoom. 
We're fixing to go live here in just a few oh, seconds. We're live no, no, we're live for the meeting. Oh, yeah. I think we can give it a few minutes extra so we can get this figured out. Yeah. Okay. The worst comes the worst. He can mute his side and he can call in the Zoom phone number and go on the speaker. He can write signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can easily dial in if you need me to. Let me turn up my speaker too and see if that helps. Does that help at all? Well, I'm thinking we can barely hear you. Yeah, I, I cranked mine up as far as I could to see if it helped. Barely. I heard microphone. That was good. You want to try saying something again, Andrew? Uh, sure. <laughs> no. Let's be a different microphone. I think they control it all. Do you want me to mute and call in? I want you to start it. Or, yes, if you should just have him call in. Okay. I'll check and see. Give us just one minute, we'll check. Okay. Happy to do whatever. I, I suspect if I phoned in with the computer on, it would give you a weird echo. So I don't want to try that. Unless you mute it on your side. Will it pick it up on the recording? You can mute him individually. He's wondering if it'll pick it up on the, on the recording at all. Yeah. Um, but it'll catch his voice. Oh, good point. <clears throat> This one have to ask him, ask him questions that he has to answer. <laughs> to uh, participate in the neighborhood. We didn't invite our side of the street. <laughs> Give that a shot, Andrew. All right, I'll give it another shot. That's a little better. Issue we have, Spencer's not here, and if we allow him to come through the phone, because all your mics are on for the Zoom session, it's going to get feedback, and you're not going to be able to hear it at all. What if he needs to this side? Well, these mics are going to pick up that. And so then that's when you hear it in here. Oh. That back feed. Oh. I don't know. And that blocks all of you out, so I can't hear anything you're saying. Yeah, and then he won't hear you guys. Well, we'll just have to be quiet when he speaks. Carefully, I guess. No, we can. Yeah, I, I think. I we have. Hear. I have my door closed, so I can shout. There you go. That was a little we, better. You can hear that. Okay. Or maybe Andrew, if you want to raise your hand in the Zoom and type in a comment, then I can read it aloud to everybody. I'll try and just see if I can talk loudly. Okay. That worked. This is working. That's working. Okay, are we good to go? He can write it on paper and hold it in. <laughs> like to call to order the special planning and zoning meeting for Thursday, August 13th, 2020. Commissioner McCafferty, would you lead us in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Thank you, sir. We have a roll call, please. 
Of course. Commissioner Walker? Here. Commissioner McCafferty? Here. Commissioner Passiak? Here. Commissioner Schweitzer? Here. Commissioner Metters? Here. Vice Chair Armstrong? Here. Chair Merritt? Here. And our attorney is present remotely. Okay, so we'll move on to item 4A, consideration of possible action to approve the July 7th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those? Is there any comments or questions? I okay. make a motion we accept them as printed. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Going on to item five, staff reports. Do you have a few of those? Uh, we have no staff reports. So we're gonna move forward to the public hearing portion of item 6A, the, which is public hearing and consideration and possible action to forward a recommendation to the town council regarding an amendment to the town of Chino Valley Unified Development Ordinance, UDO, section five subdivision regulations and section two definitions. Josh, will you enlighten us? <laughs> Um, I'll give you a PowerPoint. How about that? That'll work. Just make sure it's short for the new mayor. <laughs> Does this work? I just turned it on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so um, a complete rewrite of uh, Chapter 5, Section 5 of uh, Chapter 154 of the Unified Development Ordinance, which is the subdivision regulations. Um, we have uh, been meeting at least once a month, uh, except for March and April, uh, from last December to today uh, to discuss um, these changes with the UDO subcommittee. Uh, a member of the Planning Commission has attended multiple of those meetings, uh, Vice, uh, Vice Chair uh, Armstrong has attended uh, many of those. Um, the, all those meetings were advertised and they were all open to the public. Um, specifically, uh, we've held uh, to date uh, seven meetings with the UDO subcommittee as well as a study session with council on June 30th to discuss uh, the, the proposed changes. The current draft, which uh, you've had now for um, two weeks to read and review and kind of digest uh, is version nine or 10. So um, the, the language has uh, gone through multiple iterations, um, multiple changes, and uh, has been fine-tuned. Um, the majority of the changes address minor subdivisions, specifically land splits that are actually subdivisions. Uh, we clarify land splits, identify and define infrastructure for each type of uh, land division. And uh, some of the spurred these changes um, have been a lack of infrastructure and drainage design. Many of the divisions of land that should have been treated as subdivisions were allowed to be lot split uh, or land split. Um, and also uh, because of the land splits that uh, did not go through the drainage and infrastructure design, uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, streets that are called easements, but they are streets for all intents and purposes. Um, and those streets have not gone through any type of design or, or infrastructure analysis, anything like that. So uh, some of those things, uh, those things are really what spurred um, the need to change um, the subdivision regulations. Um, our current code for uh, subdivisions, uh, minor and major subdivisions are required to go through both preliminary and final plat. There's no distinguish, nothing to distinguish the two. Um, uh, from their submittal requirements. So both minor and major are required to submit full geotechnical, full traffic studies, full uh, drainage studies, um, and they're all required to provide full infrastructure improvements with, based on the geotechnical, but to, you know, typically three, three inches of asphalt, um, uh, sidewalks, curb and gutter. Um, the UDO currently allows the zoning administrator to uh, waive sidewalks on both sides and allow sidewalks on one side. Um, so as we went through, we've changed um, 
we have added a type of subdivision and then we have clearly defined the difference between a minor subdivision and a major subdivision versus for the, the followed. Minor subdivisions are 10 or fewer lots. Major subdivisions are more than 10 lots. Whoops. Um, so the things that we are changing with these subdivision regulations uh, for minor subdivisions, we are reducing the process for minor subdivisions. Uh, we are also reducing infrastructure um, requirements and submittal requirements to help make the minor subdivision more uh, financially feasible. So the uh, minor subdivisions will skip review and then they will go through final plat. They'll skip planning, planning commission and go straight to town council for the final plat approval. Um, submittal of drainage, traffic, and geotechnical will be based on site conditions for each individual property um, with, well, within the, the minor subdivision. So, for instance, uh, if there is no floodplain and if there is no floodway or, or any type of uh, sheet flow or anything that we have based on uh, the studies that we have, uh, then they'd probably be able to submit a letter stating as, stating as much instead of going through the full drainage study, which would reduce the, uh, the cost of um, the, the minor subdivision. Okay. Um, so major subdivisions will still go through the entire process, uh, which are 10 plus lots, so more than 10 lots is a major subdivision. They will still go through the entire process, they'll be required to go through and submit the drainage study, the traffic study, and the geotechnical study. Um, so there's not gonna be a change to major subdivisions. Uh, then we have created a type of rural subdivision, and this applies to all subdivisions that are created that are one acre or more. If, it, if the lots are smaller than one acre, then they would be called an urban subdivision. The rural subdivision, we have reduced some of the infrastructure uh, to be more in line with a rural setting. Um, those reduced infrastructure requirements would include no sidewalks or curb, uh, the street widths are lessened in some instances, and private streets may be used, which would also uh, account for the easements and things like that, which are actually streets. Um, the one major change between the last version of the text which was shown to council at the study session as well as the UDO sub on July 22nd was the proposed creation or the definition of um, currently as we go through and we review proposed land splits that come in we do a property history and if those properties have been split within the last 10 years then we are uh, requiring the individuals to go through the minor subdivision process in order to split those properties. We are using uh, the 10-year the rule based on what we have found within the real estate division section of Arizona Revised Statutes 32-2101, which talks about looking at the 10-year ten uh, period to determine if there was an intent to subdivide. Uh, what we are proposing, instead of going back and looking at 10 years, uh, staff is proposing to do a parcel reset, a parent parcel reset with the adoption of the new language, which would make every parcel within the town, excluding subdivisions and those properties that are part of a subdivision as uh, this would, uh, um, and then with that reset, the based on Title IX. Um, so, uh, the reset is meant to help those property owners who have been requesting the town to date uh, instead of uh, a date in the thinking a date uh, with the adoption of the code would be the way to go. Uh, the reset means that all property on or before the date determined by council will be considered a parent parcel for purposes of determining whether they can qualify as a land split not requiring a subdivision. That is the, the purpose of um, requesting the Um, I am not going to go through the language word for word. Um, I believe you've had it for two weeks, um, which is ample time to read it and to generate some questions and comments. 
Uh, we have the town attorney um, on the phone uh, to help any of those questions as we as uh, we start to answer your questions. Um, uh, with that, uh, staff is recommending a, is recommending to the person that they recommend approval to the town council uh, so that we can take this forward uh, in September. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. So if it's all right with the commission, because I'm sure everybody's got a few questions, we'll just maybe start with Commissioner Pasiak and work our way around the table for the first go round and then maybe readdress at that point. Okay, thank you. You bet, don't forget your microphone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I, I submitted some questions to Will and rather than me just reading them, if he would just read the question and the response. Um, we can uh, copies of it. Um, all right, so a lot of the staff, uh, we can go through read the answer. Yeah. Uh, that way we can read it into the record. That's, That's all right. Okay, so question one was section five. He asks, why is Maricopa does not yell? Um, Frank responds, uses MAG as well. MAG and ADOT are industry standards in the state for sales. Uh, question number two, section two, 5.2.4, final plan. Um, I hope you. Uh, never have to go after a surety bond. Uh, and then he talks about some experiences Mr. he had. And uh, Frank stated, understood, and noted. Um, number three, section 5.7, minor subdivision A, page 25. It says, if the subdivider does not do a preliminary plat, how will the Planning and Zoning Commission make com comment recommendation? The intent would be to speed up the minor subdivision as it is uh, four lots to ten lots. Uh, staff feels that that number of lots can be reviewed uh, administratively and that a final plat final it would be sufficient. Um, again, major subdivisions would still be required lots would still go through all the uh, number four section 5.3.1 street location and arrangement j page 27 a minimum paved street of 20 feet is narrow to get two traffic lanes on consider 24 feet of pavement or street um, frank responded 20 feet should be sufficient for three lots uh, he states he personally prefers 11 foot lanes over 12 foot when shoulders or gutters are present except for trucks, routes, and highway speed roadways. Uh, staff would also concur, um, should be sufficient for only, th it's only for three lots. Oh, it's only three so lots. the moment they get to four lots, that widens out to two. Uh, number five is 28 blank intentionally. Uh, actually, that was a formatting error on, on my uh, Number six, table 5.1. Uh, except for rural streets, design shall be engineered. Um, yeah, that's on page 42. Number seven, section 5.3.3, water facility design D, page 33. How was the September 1st, 2025 date established? Uh, the idea there was um, it should not be a um, five years, uh, staff is, um, that date was placed in there because staff believes or hopes that town council will approve this on September 8th, 2025, or 20, in the next three weeks. So it'd be five years from that date. Um, section 5.3.4, sewer design A2, page 33, will emergency power be required for the individual grinder pump stations? 
The answer to that is yes. As part of the process, all list stations will require emergency generators with automatic switching and communications with the town's SCADA network. Number eight, section 5.3.5, 5, drainage design G, page 35, is a drainage basin for a 100-year flood uh, event excessive. The answer uh, from Frank, it is standard and coincides with our flood prevention ordinance. Number nine, section 5.3.8, easement planning A, page 37. The way it is worded does not increase the width of the easement for slopes greater than 6% or unusual topography. Uh, Frank uh, said, good catch. Old code started at 16, 20 feet should be sufficient. Okay. So uh, you'll have to reword that a little bit. Yes, I believe we could just take out the, the last sentence about the yeah. excessive slopes because the old the code increase, yes. started at 16 and when it said slopes are excessive, go to 20. So it's just easier to make everything make 20. Everything 20. Yeah. Unless we have multiple utilities and we'll take that on a case by case basis. Um, section 5.4 improvement requirements and specifications, D page 42. Um, I believe the answer was Same answer, uh, yeah. county uses MAG as well. Um, section 5.4, improvement requirements and specifications, F4, three, uh, one minimum. Uh, That's my typo. A. Oh, um, so there's a typo there. <laughs> yeah, A, A minimum. Oh, A minimum pipe diameter of 12 inches seems small. I remember uh, Maricopa County requiring a minimum pipe diameter of 18 inches for driveways. Uh, the uh, response was many older areas of town only have deep enough ditches for 12 inches. Engineering requires larger diameters when conditions allow. And then 12, section 5.4, improvement requirements and specifications, H10 on page 46. The answer to that is uh, it is a standard and coincides with our flood prevention ordinance. Did that answer okay. all your questions? That was about the emergency power again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Vice Chair Armstrong. Uh, one question, I was contacted by a developer who had a question about the timing. I asked him to show up on Zoom. Anybody on Zoom? Anyway, section one, paragraph C, zoning conditions, subparagraph one, timing or phasing of development. Is he going to be given a time that what he must start and when he must finish? What, what section again? Sorry. Section one, subparagraph C, subparagraph one, the timing or phasing of development. What page is that, uh, Commissioner uh, Armstrong? Uh, 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 looks like one. He's wondering if that is going to be a timing thing that you need to start by such and such and end by such and such. The only timing and phasing that the subdivision regulations have is that once a preliminary plat is approved, they have one year to submit for technical review final plat. Okay. That is also allowed to be extended with um, a letter written to uh, staff uh, requesting an extension. Uh, it does not have to go through Planning Commission or Council to receive the extension. We are allowed to provide an extension of one year as well. Okay. I will pass that on to him. Thank you. Um, can I jump in, maybe, Josh? Yeah, go ahead. Reading the text, it, what this does is it grants the Planning Commission authority to uh, recommend conditions of approval, including setting timing or phasing of the development is that how that reads yeah that true uh, that that is true section one is more like a purpose statement which gives you the authority to do any of those things within the rezoning okay. and and importantly josh that section is not amended as to c1 c1 is current text right section one hasn't changed so the only thing that's changed with section one is instead of it being one long run on staff, split it out okay. and, and bullet it. Yeah. Thank you. Remove public ways. Uh, yeah, the other uh, request. Public way got removed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McCafferty. I just want to make sure I've understood the minor and the major uh, development, but it's up to 10, so 11 or more would be considered a major, not because I, I heard you say it both ways. Where right. if they got ten, so ten is minor, 
11 and above is major. 4 to 10 is minor. Okay. 10 plus, so over 10. Okay. I just want to make is okay. major. And then I scratched out that note because you're going to have a parent. You're going to have a parent parcel reset, and that's going to be based on the, on the date that the council establishes. Uh, we're recommending that the uh, parcel reset occur at the 30-day period after the text is approved by town council. So roughly October. Roughly October 8th. I think we have it in there at October 15th. Yeah, October 15th. And then you, uh, earlier in your slideshow, you made reference to rural, rural developments or uh, one acre or more. Right. Sometimes we get a lot of, just I want to make sure, sometimes they're 0.95. Are you going to consider that one acre, 0 0.90? No, if it's under an acre, uh, technically we, um, we can't approve them f uh, for well and septic anyway. Um, they have to be one acre or more. Okay. So if it's less than one acre, then if they don't have access to water or sewer or both, then they wouldn't be able to do it. Which would mean even 0.99 acre. Okay. I'm good. And that's before road being restricted. Right. So the way subdivisions work uh, is the infrastructure is um, taken out of the calculation of the lots because typically they're dedicated to the town or they're private streets or, or whatnot. So that infrastructure is deducted from the total acreage of the lot. And then the net acreage is used to determine how many lots that they can divide up and create. Um, with land splits not requiring a subdivision, with the streets that they've been putting in, the streets actually exist within an easement. And that easement or the portion of those of that easement where that street is actually belongs to the property owners adjacent to where that, that street goes through. My last question is this, this language will address what has commonly been referred to as the wildcat subdivisions. Um, yeah, the, the intent, see, those are subdivisions, those land splits that were allowed to occur. They're actually subdivisions. They should have been treated as subdivisions. They, sh they should have put in the infrastructure for a subdivision. They should have gone through drainage design. Um, this language, and we are going to be enforcing this language as well as uh, Arizona state statute. So, but we're not operating under this language today, are we? We're operating under current language okay. in our code, along with Arizona Revised Statute Title IX. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Meadors. Um, my only question is, like on your rural lot splits, most of those are like AR5, five acres and they split them to like one acre lots, and that gives you four acres, but that would put you as a minor. So I was just, okay, so I decided it's four and more instead of four, you know, five and above to be minor and let the rural have the four split. Lots. Five and above is county. Uh, Arizona State Statute for Title IX, which is towns and municipalities, states that when a property is divided into four or more lots, it's a subdivision. Okay. So if you have a five acre piece of property and you split it into three, because it's considered a parent parcel, you go through the land split, not requiring a subdivision, you get your three lots. The next person that comes in and wants to split the larger piece, which is what's occurred in the past, you're actually getting to the fourth lot at that point, and it should have been treated as a subdivision or the moment uh, a street is put in, if you split a piece of property and you're putting a street in, you're only allowed to split it two times before it becomes a subdivision. So um, the moment these easements or these streets were put in, they should have been considered a subdivision because you have one piece, you divide it once into two pieces with a street, you're got, you got a subdivision. And that's based on Arizona State Statute, okay. Title IX. Cause I guess because I'm used to county experience where you do the, the quad split with the cul-de-sac in the center. So right. that's considered county and not a city. <laughs> that's correct. County is, uh, they follow Title 11 and the towns and municipalities follow Title 9. Okay. That was my only question. Commissioner Switzer. 
uh, and the major and minor, the, the lot size doesn't matter. It's four lots of any size. So lot acre size doesn't matter. Right, so uh, for minor and major, it is just the process that any subdivision is gonna follow, whether they're urban or rural. The urban and rural subdivision is how we define the, the size of the lots themselves. So if you wanna create, let's say, Craftsman Court, that's gonna be considered an urban subdivision, and they're gonna have their level of infrastructure that they're gonna to have to provide. Uh, and then if you have, let's say, Heritage Point, Heritage Point is one acre, or larger so there they would be considered rural. rural and the rural subdivision would have their own infrastructure requirements uh, and things like that to maintain that rural the visual impact of a rural development so that would do away with they wouldn't be necessarily required to have sidewalks and mm -hmm. stuff like that that's right okay. they're both major subdivisions because they're Understood. Over, because over of the channel. number that's right and they have to go through preliminary mm -hmm. yep and the idea on the miners just to keep costs down for developer for smaller developments. Right, cost and timing. Good. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Walker. I'm good. The the pipe size, the one foot, you can do a fifteen inch arch and it's squished down to thirteen inches. That's what we use. We we get this working but we actually use that a lot as well so good suggestion and I appreciate that so yeah well, my questions were answered all right so I have a few not okay. very many if you go to page 12 which is item K towards the bottom of the page that's four you mean item four yeah not item four but item 3k it's on page 12. Oh, okay. It says that the proposed sewage disposal system will be by individual lot septic tanks where permitted the result percolation tests and test boring logs shall be submitted with the preliminary plat. So does that mean that each lot will be per? I'll let Frank answer that one. Uh, I think we would defer to what County and state requirements are to that on, on their requirements for submittals of subdivisions when it comes to septic. The uh, environmental group for development services of the county would review all of those. So we would just follow what their requirements are as far as park tests for the subdivision. I don't think it's each individual lot, but I would have to follow up and check on that to be sure. Um, I'm not saying that it is either, but it's been my experience that blanket perks went out years ago and that now they're very particular about your perk test. And if that's the case and you have to perk each hole for each property and according to county standards, you have to put the leach lines within 30 feet of the perk hole, how would you determine where to perk it? And could you, you know, if you didn't want to put it there when you bought the property, could you do another perk hole? You see where it's going with that? Right. Um, right. And I would just say that the county's involved in our approval process, so that should be part of the technical review process. Right, so the section that you're reading from is... So everything that's submitted during... ...provisions is only conceptual. So actual, actually doing the septic design or the sewer design would take place and be finalized during technical review before we even take it to final plat. Okay, but it says the result of percolation tests and test boring logs shall be submitted with the preliminary plat. Right, so those would be conceptual only. Okay, so how can you have a conception if you haven't dug a hole? I'm, and I'm not being contentious. What I'm saying is environmental services has become very particular about per mm -hmm. test. And so if you haven't performed one, then there is no boring logs or percolation test to be submitted with the plat. That's true, but before the final plat is approved, it's a single lot. It's not individual lots until the final plat is recorded. So they would just have to do one test, one deal, and be done with it. And then when it goes to the final design, 
or technical review, they would be able to do something at that point. Technical review is where the majority of the actual construction documents and design is finalized for the final plat. So before the final plat is recorded, it's still just one single lot. Okay, that makes sense. Just be aware that at some point, somebody's either gonna have to dig a hole or put some wordage in there that says based on site investigation, I know that because I've been down that road. And so just, I don't know if we need to change anything there, but it just was a question. I, I, I didn't find the language. What, I'm on page 12. And you're saying page 12, K. It's, K. it's K. Okay. Third item. I was saying A before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I may, with the commission's permission, uh, in between now and when it goes to council, I can follow up with, the county environmental services and, and clean up that language if necessary and get their guidance on that since they're the approving agency for the septic systems if if that would be sufficient as far as i'm concerned they have jurisdiction anyway so yeah whatever they say is going to go but i think it needs to be investigated so that we're not working ourselves into a corner here okay um if you make a recommendation for you can Research. You know how to word it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we would just maybe in our wordage when we if and when we move forward is in in the proposed uh, motion that we just say item three. The result K of the whatever. parent parcel or amend section K. You know we could just say amend section K to clearly articulate the county's regulations. That's a great wordage. Thank you. You got that, Tom? Does that cover what you want, Frank? <laughs> yes, sir. What was it? Uh, clearly articulate the county's regulations governing the first test. Okay, and then I had a second question on page 22. Under final plat review, it's um, item 14B. And this is just a question, not a comment or a criticism. It says council consideration. So after we look at the preliminary plat, we don't see this again at all. Uh, only for minor subdivisions. Yeah. Because it says here. Well, minor subdivisions, it's, it's waived. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, well, the question is, it says, I got to back up here, for final plat review, the item B says council consideration. Council shall consider the proposed final plat after the zoning administrator and the public works director approve all civil drawings and deem technical review to be complete. To me, that sounds like it just goes straight to council and we don't get a second look at it. Is that the intent or am I reading that wrong? No, we, we bring major subdivision final plats back to planning commission. Okay, so is there anything we should do with this wordage because I didn't see that statement. Well, I think this is under the that section though, isn't it? Isn't this under that final plot review? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's under, final plot it's under review. major. Yeah, it's under major. If you want clarifying language that it goes to planning commission and council, we can do that. I mean, that's traditionally how it's worked, isn't it? Not correct there. Yeah, I I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel that if we've looked at the preliminary, then we should at least get a look at the final plat to see if some of the things we talked about were included or kicked out or however, and then have our second shot at it. Right. So how can we word that to say commission commission gets to look at it first and then it goes to council? We can just call it Commission and Council consideration. Okay, that would be great. So, Commissioner Armstrong, you got that one? No, you're gonna have to give me wordage on both of those two things that you wanna change. Okay, let's tackle this one because it's simple. It's on page 22 and it's item 14, final plat review. If I can suggest really quick, I, um, I think Andrew, just, I don't oh, be. Andrew's trying to talk. Go ahead, Andrew. if, if I can suggest a, a, that you just make it parallel to the language you already have, 
uh, in the preliminary plat review and approval. I think we can make the two look about the same and it should accomplish what you're looking for. Yeah. You got that? <laughs> So, so I gotcha. So instead of preliminary, we just say final. Yes, yeah, so the language. The language is in C. It's uh, 5.2.3 C is where we talk about the various reviews, and so we can do similar language to that in final plat just to make it marry up a little better. So oh, just instead of saying changing anything, we can just use the same wordage only final plat as opposed to preliminary plat. Right. The, 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 the proposed amendment from the Planning Commission will be to make the final plat approval process parallel to the preliminary plat approval process. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So do we need to go back, Commissioner Armstrong, to yes, please. the first one? Yeah, because I this word you just got to be correct or it's not gonna fly. Yep. So it's on page twelve, item K. Three. Item three K. Three K, correct. Page 12, item 3K, to read what? What would you want it? I mean, what, what's the language you think would be? All you, in the motion, you just need to state that item 3K needs to be reworded according to county, county standards. Right, clearly articulate county regulations. Okay. And then we'll check with the county and get the language and insert it in. Put it back on staff. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all good. Okay. I think I had one more, but I got to track it down here. Page 22. Yeah. Section B. It'd be 14B on the final plot. Okay, um, the next one is on page 25. It's 5.2.7 minor subdivision item D, where it goes to the geotechnical report, which talks about the regulations and the subdivider shall be required to provide documentation containing sufficient detail as determined by the public works director to show that safe, durable streets will be constructed. Should we not change that to conform to some standard besides safe, durable? Uh, we have a minimum standard in the tables. Can we not? Because that doesn't refer to that. It just refers to a safe, durable street. Well, I can show you all kinds of them that don't have any paving on them. They're safe and they're durable. But you got to grade them every once in a while, and I don't think that's the intent. Frank, do you want to answer that? Yeah. The other thing is we can just say it's a private road, and that sort of leaves it whatever. Or well, can we say that? Minor subdivisions aren't necessarily – they won't necessarily have private roads. Right. The private roads are only going to be if they don't – construct the streets to a level that the town would want to take the dedication of right of way. So, so if it's going to be less than that, then I think you asked me to answer. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that would fall under our discretion on that until I, I think we eventually want to follow up with engineering standards that would better define this. Currently in the town code, uh, besides the, the UDO, there are minimum construction standards of some sort of at least, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's a, at least some sort of chip seal surface concerning dust control. 
And as Andrew will tell you, there's two things you can't waive with subdivisions, and that's I, I believe that's drainage and dust control per state law. That's correct. So we would need something on that, and I think this is intended to uh, get us in there. I don't know of any geotech engineer that um, has recommended a minimum pavement section that is not paved um, when it comes to supporting fire trucks and school buses. So uh, until we get those engineering standards and details through this commission and council process, uh, as town engineer, I I feel that's sufficient. I don't know if Andrew wants to weigh in at all on this as well. Um, so uh, I agree with everything you said. What if we just did away with that last sentence because then it leaves it up to the public works director? Because that gives you so much, there's so much, that can be interpreted so so subjective. Well, it's safe, it, durable streets. So my, yeah, that's my point. And maybe, or we put some wordage in there to say that future must be pursuant to existing road standards or whatever, must be minimum standards. or the table. You said there was a table that outlined that? Yeah, the table's in five point. Maybe make reference up to the public, uh, public works. Correct me sure. if I'm wrong, Josh, but the table is referring to rural subdivisions. Uh, well, no, the table it talks about both rural and urban. Um, what page is that on, Josh? That's on page 30. No? Yeah, page uh, 29 and 30. So, page 29's table talks about. Uh, you know, the pavement edge treatment, the sidewalk, the minimum roadway width, uh, and it, it applies for both urban and rural, uh, as well as. And then when you go to five, that's the rural subdivision minimum design standards. So these are the design standards that we would require at a minimum if they're not constructed based on a geotechnical or the public works director's. So, so his question, should we say, should we just refer by the public to that? works direct, director pursuant to table 5.1 and or 5.2? Yeah, we could do that instead of the durable, say durable. It um, just seems like, I mean, somebody could sit there specific. if they wanted to and argue all day long on what is safe and durable. And I think we're trying to clean yeah. up problems and not leave the door open. Somewhere. You're right. <laughs> so, okay, so we'll just reference those two tables in. Oh, sorry, Andrew. And it's hard to hear. I, I think the point of the section, though, was to leave discussion with the public works director as to what kind of geotechnical information would be necessary. So, in order to get rid of, the, of any kind of confusion here, I think the first suggestion was probably the best one, which is to end the sentence at as determined by the public works director. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think that after that was softening language to give people uh, some comfort that Frank wasn't going to ask him for the world. But if it's less detailed than a geotech report, that's really all that matters here. It's the, the public works director will tell them how much less detailed and we can just put a period right at the end of that. If, if they're asking to provide less than a geotechnical report, they should have their feet nailed down as best we can. Yeah. With and I think it being in that's, control that's of that was the idea was to try and be flexible but not be um, too wishy washy. And I think it, it makes it a lot stronger sentence to just put a period there. So, can we, would everybody okay with striking that? We just delete that final sentence. That back final back sentence. Over the yeah, okay. after the word public works. It just leaves the works director. Director. public works director period. We'll just delete the sentence that says to show that safe durable streets will be the, constructed. The portion of the sentence, yes. Correct. Yeah. Right. Portion of the sentence. Thank you. So the next one is really not an issue. I just want to make sure that this radius is what I think it is. This is on page 27. 5.3.2 street design item one cul-de-sacs and the 60 foot radius that is the radius i believe that fire trucks and school buses can operate properly in 
Uh, Frank, did you want to answer that? Sure, just give me one second to read it. Jeff, you need to take We'll just hold on and have no discussion until you get back. Sorry about that. No problem. We are now back in session. Mr. Marbury, did you figure something out? Um, the um, existing code. And I don't know if it references the cul de sac. The, the On page 27 and 5.3.2, is that where you're talking about the cul-de-sacs? It's uh, 5.3.2, item A, subsection 1. Yes. But where I'm having concerns upon reading this is I'm, I'm used to... Uh, not 41. So the, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because almost every time we have some sort of a subdivision come up, the first thing that is asked is school buses and fire trucks, can they get in there and have access? So is there some way we can, I'm not worried about this wording so much, but that we can address it so that we're accurate in saying that this is the right radius. Is the current language in our code is uh, cul-de-sac streets shall terminate in a circular right-of-way of 50 feet in radius with a minimum improved traffic turning circle of 40 feet. So we're exceeding the existing code. 1641. And however, in the past, when we've been asked that question, we have always answered that yes, it will meet those requirements. So right. I want to be able to say that again and only know for sure we're there. Right, we can. Uh, Item two has the same 41 foot requirement. Yeah. yeah, and that's another one we can double check with both the fire department and the school district. Which is about the, <laughs> that's about the next sentence we say is we always check with the fire department and the school but, district. But we can check now because yeah. I'm always used to 45 foot minimums. That's where the 41 scares me. And yeah, so let's maybe. How do we do that? I, do I'm not comfortable submitting a recommendation of approval with all these stuff still hanging out here. If we have to go back and check somebody else's regulations to change this, I think that needs to be done before we can send it on. Not disagreeing with you. However, because of the work and effort that's been put in here, 
maybe we can just t address these items, which are kind of technicalities that could be cleared up before it goes before council. Do we, is there, when does it go before council? Uh, we have it scheduled for September 8th. So there's, there's no meeting with us between now and no. then, is there? Hmm. Well, there's a September 1st meeting that we have with you, but the uh, notification time to get this. Not gonna work out. But, but I, I, I'm gonna ask the question. We, address, we, we have identified a potential concern. Now we have the public works director who is absolutely adamant about it being accurate. So now that we bring it up, we why couldn't we, if we want to, move the document forward, say we approve it with the understanding that our public works director is going to ensure the validity of these uh, regulations. This this radius present which, that to the council with the uh, you know this could be accurate, but we just don't know. So and I'm I. Am, from my position, I would be okay with that, knowing that the town engineer is going to either say it's fine or offer wordage to make it correct. All right, and I will do that, and I'm confident with 45 feet. So do we make that move now and make it 45 feet? I would recommend recommending approval uh, and let us do the research and get that text changed by September 8th to bring it to council. So I, if we make the motion to recommend approval subject to possible changes by the public works director, does that cover everything that's in these three changes so far? Yeah. Okay with me. Because they're considered de minimis changes, are they not? I'll, I'll let Andrew answer that. <laughs> no, they're, they're definitely not items that would require you to go back through another public hearing. Okay. Which we really, I don't feel that they are either. I think they're technical things that just need to be clarified. Yeah, it could just be pen and ink changes. So House cleaning, housekeeping yeah. type. Okay. All right. So one more, and this isn't a. This is more of a compliment. This is. Item 5.3.2, street design, item D on page 31, sub, subsection D on page 31, subsector item number five. I wanted to, because I think this is great wordage, street jogs shall be avoided. I mean, there are several places in this town that have jogs in them that make no sense, and I'm glad that you clearly said no. Like oh, thank the roundabouts. You. Pardon? Like the jogs leading into the roundabouts. Or on uh, one east at the north end, and several other places in town. That's all I have for myself. So now everybody's been around once. Is there any other? Comments that we need to go around again. Commissioner Midors. On, I know like every seven miles because of the curvature of the earth, things have to move. Is that to prevent the street jogs? Actually, I think the street jogs were just things that happened because nobody made them not happen. That would be my opinion. Because I know like in Phoenix, Baseline Road is the baseline from the meridian point for the state. And I know like 7th Street and 7th Avenue all do a significant jig jag at Baseline Road. So I didn't know if we have any of those up here. I don't think our road system is so long that we're going to have that as an issue. I think it's more of people just not doing their jobs on the way through. That would be my comment. Okay. I'm glad the wordage is in there. Okay, so one more time, is there any more discussion with it, or any questions or comments? Is town staff satisfied? Uh, yeah, we are satisfied with the language. Uh, we believe that going forward, this will clear up a lot of confusion and help the town. Um, I would just add, uh, after you're done with your discussion, just remember to open up to the public hearing so yes. that the public has a chance to 
ask questions. Um, I feel quite safe in doing that tonight. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, yes, ma'am. I had two typo corrections. I don't know if we need to put those in now. We should get that out in the open if it's important to do that. Page 15. Uh, uh, section B, first sentence, it goes council until all engineering plans for, I think, have been. I think the word for should be removed. Where are we? Page oh, 15? Extra word. word. Oh, yeah. yeah, omit word for. Mm -hmm. That's what you're suggesting. Right? Is that what you're suggesting? Correct. Omitted, uh, the word for. It's a grammar correction. And, and the second on one? Page 10. Uh, section A, about the one, two, three, four, fifth line down. It says preliminary plat, and then it goes and may. Ah. I think the word and needs and to, be removed. Need to be removed. Got it. Now, I used to do proofreader, so. So, in all of these comments that we've made, town staff can refer to the minutes of the meeting to make sure that they've caught everything. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, we have made notes and we will refer to the minutes to make sure that we make the changes requested and do the research before okay. the council meeting. Thank you, sir. Is there any other discussion? Okay, so I'm going to open up the public portion of this meeting. Is there anybody from the public who would like to come up and speak? There's an alternative. So, so seeing nobody from the public here and Is present. There anybody up there? Anybody on Zoom? And so, making note that there are no people on Zoom. That's correct. correct. And the Zoom uh, session now does not allow for any comment. They would have had to have already submitted that yeah. okay so having no public here to speak and everybody else has had their say i'm going to close the public portion of this meeting and ask that there be a motion made mr chairman i recommend the planning commission forward to council a recommendation of approval to amend the town of chino valley unified development ordinance chapter 154 by amending section five subdivision regulations in section two definitions to include changes to be made by the public works director. I'm waiting for the attorney to zap me here. Do we need to articulate each change? Do uh, I need to say anything towards the changes that we're thinking of? I, I think, Mr. Chairman, if you, if the motion is simply to, uh, as amended, pursuant to the discussion by the commission, that'll give the latitude to staff to go forward and make all the changes that, that you've made tonight. Okay, so if he leaves his motion as it is and includes the sentence as amended by our discussion, would that? I, I, I think that that will, will be broad enough to cover everything. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're gonna add as amended at as the amended. end of it. Okay, recommend planning commission forward to council a recommendation of approval to town council to amend the town of Chino Valley Unified Development Ordinance, chapter 154 by amending section five subdivision regulations and section two definitions as amended by commission to be addressed by the public works director. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, this will be a roll call vote, please. Sure, Commissioner Welker. Aye. Commissioner McCafferty. Aye. Commissioner Pasiak. Aye. Commissioner Schweitzer. Aye. Commissioner Metters. Aye. Vice Chair Armstrong. Aye. Chair Merritt. Aye. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you folks for your hard work and thank you town staff for your hard work. So we're gonna move forward to item seven, non-public, Hearing action items, do we have any of those? 
There are none tonight. Okay, so moving forward to item eight, any discussion items? None for tonight. Cruising right along, we're going to open up the meeting to the public for public comments. I won't read my usual statement because there is no public here to read it to you. <laughs> so we're going to, at this point, not move to item 10, but to say that congratulations to Vice Chair Armstrong for his position in the town council, and we will miss your efforts here, and thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Elect. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to item 10, which is a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. And I will second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You didn't want a real call vote on that? <laughs> <laughs> has, has anybody ever denied it? Have you not, not uh, really. I've had people say no and then say just kidding. But. Uh, Commissioner, the funniest one that I've ever seen is uh, denied in the room. Yeah, when they cut it, it is happening. Yeah. The oh, yeah. They just say it's all worth mine. I, I have been doing a council report. Somebody said, no, I have another item for discussion. I forgot about it. No, that's a legitimate one. Yeah.